Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. We're back with another episode of County of Forty Mile by Camille. And last time we just finished up harvesting this little barley field that we've got right up by the farm. And today we're going to jump into our wheat field here. And so we're going to take this uh, first combine up here. And I think what we're going to do is just take this headland off real quick and then get him started going down the long rows. And then we're going to jump in the other combine and have him start uh, taking the headlands off on the other end of the field. We don't want to run into our semi here. Uh, at the end of last episode, we got both of the semis uh, placed out here, one on this end of the field and one on the other end. So we should be in a really good spot to just jump straight into harvest here. Now, I want to make sure, whoops. I want to make sure that we're um, not going to have too much of an angled row here on the headlands. Um, in fact, maybe we'll just square this off right now, and then I'll pick up that little scraggly bit. We got plenty of grass here uh, to buffer our turning around, and so I think this is going to work great. I'm not going to bother getting the GPS set up on this because uh, we're just going to get going on the long rows as soon as we uh, get started anyway here. And so we're only making the the one round. We should be pretty good. And it looks like we're getting a decent yield here on this wheat. We're coming in at 100 bushels an acre. Uh, similar to the other field, if we kind of come in here and take a look, this is actually going to be a pretty good yield here on the uh, end of this field with a little bit reduced yield on the long rows on the second half of the field there, um, which is okay. Um, and so really that means that this uh, 100 acres or 100 bushels an acre should be um, some of our best wheat that we're seeing here on the map. And so I'll be curious to see what we get on the other end of the field once we kind of get going here. This series has been a lot of fun, uh, especially because we're getting to use some big equipment and some equipment that I haven't used that much of before. And so I'm really digging these big Fent combines. Um, we've got a couple of these 9Ts here, and if you remember in my Flint Hills series, we tried out a 10T at one point. Um, maybe this farm needs to get an upgrade at some point to a 10T. We'll have to, we'll have to see if we can swing that here uh, at some point. So with the headland off on this end, I think what I want to do is go ahead and just get this guy going down these short rows here. And I'm just going to take off this little bit because we've got some uh, some crops that are making their way onto the road here. And so I'm going to just grab those and then back up and get more of a square approach to this field. And we'll get a worker going down the length of this and we'll jump down into the other combine and uh, hopefully get ahead of this guy and take off his end row here. It looks like we're good to go. If I just turn the HUD back on, we're going at 90 degrees here. So we should be A-OK. -okay. And if we just grab combine number two here, the thought being if we take one more headland pass off here, or a, a headland pass off here, uh, it should give us enough room to turn around if we couple that with the road there. I can't imagine that we're going to need more than a couple of header widths to do that. And then once we've taken this pass off, we're going to head all the way down to the end of the field there. And we'll take a uh, couple of headland passes off on that end. We'll probably do two full passes on that end just to make sure we don't fall off the edge of the map. Uh, but then we'll be able to get the worker started on this guy going up and down the long rows uh, on the far edge of the field there. And hopefully we'll be able to keep up with these guys without too much difficulty with that grain cart. That's the other thing that I've really been liking about this farm is that uh, big Fent tractor on the grain cart is rather speedy. It works very well at uh, the road speed, so when we're empty, we can definitely make some solid progress uh, across the field and keep up with our uh, two combines. I did improve the line of sight distance here, uh, how far out we're drawing machines so that we can see our equipment from a little bit further away. Um, not quite able to see it all the way from this end of the field, but pretty close. And so it's definitely better. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to keep an eye on things uh, just a little bit better now that we've done that. 
And yeah, there's not that much grass here to our right, so we're definitely going to take two full uh, swaths off here, I think, on this end before we get the worker going. We're not anywhere near getting full, so I think we're going to be in a good spot. Now what I do want to do is make sure that we're emptying that other combine on his drive back up that short row. I think we're missing the opportunity to keep him moving, but I'd rather get this opened up and get everything kind of going and then we'll worry about it. This is a really big field, but thankfully it's a long and narrow field, so it's not really going to take that many passes with these big combines to knock this field out, I don't think. And so once we get the combines moving here, we're going to be able to just uh, drive grain cart for a while, I think, and really knock this field out really quick. I'm not too worried about it. And then I'm looking across the road here at our canola field, and man, that's going to be a massive field to tackle. Um, it should be a lot of fun, but that's going to take some time, I think. So I'm just looking at how much wheat we've got in the hopper, and while we're not really getting close to full, I think I want to go ahead and empty this guy out before we send him down to the uh, long rows here, because I want to make sure he can make it all the way down to the end of the field if at all possible. Uh, it'll be a good test to see how far uh, a combine's going to be able to make it here on the long rows, and hopefully he can make it all the way down and then I can unload him on his way back down the field when his auger's on the, uh, not on the crop side, uh, since we are going to be using regular workers on this field. If I was using course play and we were cutting through in lands mode, uh, maybe it'd be a little bit easier to tackle this field, but honestly I think that the base game workers are going to be more than sufficient for us on uh, this field at least today. And so we've got him going now. We're going to jump up here, grab our grain cart, and see if I can catch this guy right at the end of the field here. Looks like he's probably going to beat me to the end. Uh, and so we might have to swap over and stop him, but we're going to definitely give it an effort to see if I can catch him right here at the end of the field. This is where that 39 miles an hour road speed is coming in handy. Probably wouldn't drive 39 in the field realistically, but I really just want to catch this combine before he gets to the end. He's almost full too. And so this is just going to make our lives easier if we can catch him before he tries to turn around. Uh, so that we don't have to worry about it. I wish he'd just stop. Thank you. It's already uh, just short of 400 bushels, which is awesome. I think we're going to go ahead and drop this into the semi here, since we're already here. And then we're going to just head over to the end row here in the corner and wait and see how full our combine gets it's coming down the long rows here. I can't quite see the combine, but I can just see the uh, field area that's being harvested turning to brown behind him. So I've got kind of an idea of where he's at right now, but can't quite be sure. So let's go ahead and put ourselves over here in the corner, and then we'll jump back over to the combine and just get a feel for if he's going to make it here to the end or not. I'm also loving this Brent with the big floaters on the back. It fits really well with this tractor. Um, I typically use a lot of grain carts and stuff that have tracks on them uh, because that's more what I'm used to seeing in uh, more modern farms right now. But um, this farm particularly, we're going all wheeled based equipment. Well, I say all wheel based. We've got tracks on the harvesters, I suppose. So here we're in the different soil type and you can see that we're only getting 72.3 bushels per acre if i bring up the precision farming map we're in that silty clay area uh, which knocks our yield down just a little bit about 15 percent it looks like i'm trying to remember off of the top of my head what the actual um, percentage is but you can see here we're also doing some significant hits to the nitrogen level in the soil here uh, we're not quite going down to zero, but we're in the the pretty low 20 to 40 kilogram per hectare here. So um, that's something where, depending on which crops we cycle in, uh, we'll be putting down quite a bit of nitrogen, I think. 
uh, in the spring as we continue planting, which is okay. And so we're not quite getting full here. You can see we just switched over to the better soil type. And so we went from 70 something up to almost 100 uh, bushels an acre. And if we jump over to the other combine here, you can see we're at 30% hopper capacity. So we're definitely gonna be able to keep up with these two combines. Um, I think that once we get them both going on the long rows here, uh, it's going to be a, we're going to get into a little bit more of a routine and be able to follow one up and unload on the way up and then follow the other one back down and unload on the way back down. And so that's kind of what I'm thinking we're going to be doing here today. And so let's switch back here and watch combine number two so that we've got a good idea of when he gets to the end row here. Now, we do have a little bit of a curve here on this corner of the field that we didn't take off a lot of the end rows here, so I'll be curious to see if the worker can handle getting all the way to the end of the field and turning around, or if he's going to do something a little bit silly and try to cut back in on his left side here halfway through the field. Either way, we're going to be here to help him get through any struggles that he has. In fact, I think we might even preemptively stop the worker here. Uh, maybe not. Maybe he's going to just behave. We'll give him a shot. Let's see what he's got in him. Mm, probably not how I would have turned around, but I'm going to allow it. We're going to allow it. As long as he backs up all the way. Nope. Yep. Oh, he's going to do it. Look at that. Now I should probably be running RTK stations on the farm since we do have precision farming enabled. I think that helps the workers be a little bit more efficient, at least from a uh, cost perspective. Uh, I'm not really sure. I've not looked into the full benefits there of running RTK stations yet. Uh, I just generally slapped them down and forgot about it. And so I'm going to go ahead and start unloading this guy. We're not going to get over to the other combine to unload him. Uh, but I think he's probably going to be good for one more round here uh, since he's uh, doing the short rows. And so I'll follow this guy down the long rows here. And then we'll just pick him back up after he makes his round and is headed back to the north. Actually, we're going east and west, so I'll catch him when he's going west. Gotta get Perma's monitor in here to look at my grain tank or edit this mod to show the grain in a unit of measure that Unit Convert knows about. It looks like our combine is empty now. Um, however, I kind of want to finish emptying him closer to the end of the end rows here but I'm just worried that our other combine isn't going to be able to completely make it all the way around. So what I'm going to do is bring this guy closer down here to the end of the field, somewhere that is going to be convenient for us if we do want to unload our uh, combine two here on the way. And then we're going to hop over there and just take a quick peek and see how full combine one is getting. Combine one is already over 80%. If I just stayed in my tractor a little bit longer, I probably would have seen that. So I think we are going to just keep going. Um, I can always come back down here and catch him before he gets to the end, I'm thinking, uh, with how slow he is. And so we're going to zip up here and see if I can unload Combine one. We really want to get these guys into that pattern I was talking about so that we can keep up with both of them. Uh, without them getting full while they're going the wrong way down the field. I'm just really hoping that Combine 1 can make it to the end here before he gets full and get turned around. It'd be really nice to be able to empty him back on the way up without having to stop him and pull him out of the row, but he's got quite a few feet left here, and this is the better uh, ground type that he's currently in, so I'm not overly hopeful. He's looking mighty full right now. 97. 98. 99. Oh, you gotta be kidding. 
100%. He's got one foot left. Ah, oh, well. We'll unload a little bit here. We'll just do it at a standstill since we're here at the moment, and then we'll zip out there and unload the other combine before he gets to the corner here, hopefully. All right, this is the moment of truth. Can I get back down to our second combine and start unloading him before he hits the corner? I don't know. It's going to be close. At least we've got enough room in the grain cart to take some grain. I'm not worried about getting full. All right, we've made it to the end just as he's getting here, so not quite as speedy as we anticipated. But I guess we got him before he's trying to turn around here at least, so we're making progress. Hopefully we can get caught up here. I think that combine number one is going to be in a sticky situation here after he turns around because I think he's going to come in on short rows and not be able to figure out how to turn around and get back on the long row. So we might have to help him out here just a little bit. But we're going to go ahead and dump into this semi here while we're here. We got the back copper all topped off. Now we're going to put the rest into the front. I don't think we'll fill this semi up though, which is fine. We'll definitely be back down here shortly. So let's zip up here and see if we can help the worker figure out what we're going to do here with these short rows. I think what we might do is let him get right back down here and then we'll turn him, take him down the road here and uh, start back off on the long rows lined up with the edge of the field. That should probably be the easiest path for us. Um, rather, And then he'll just be off by a little bit here as he's coming up. But I'd rather have him have the extra part of the header on the field rather than on the driveway. And it looks like he's a getting close to full here. 63%, uh, I guess not too full. He's got his flashers on already, which I would think he wouldn't turn those on until he got to like 80%. I think what we're gonna do is just take this right up to the edge of the field here and then we'll unload him manually and then take him all the way back to the end of uh, the field here. Actually, let's not unload him manually. I don't want to be sitting here at a stop, so we're going to drive him down to the end here and we'll get him started coming back up this long row and then we'll grab the grain cart real quick and run down here and unload him on the go. And that'll leave us in a good position to go get caught up with uh, combine number two here in just a few minutes and unload him on the way back down as well. And we'll hopefully then finally be into that rhythm I was talking about. We'll also be probably more than halfway done with this field at that point as well, but we do have a number of additional passes to get through. The true test of our speed driving skills, can we get down here to combine number one and get turned around and unloading before he finishes off his final 10% here. He is just about full enough to stop. I don't think we're going to make it. Oh, we'll look at that. If we'd gotten not quite so far away, I think we probably would have made it. Yep, we just weren't quite where we needed to be. Almost. We could have almost been awesome. Now, our other combines are already at 80%, so we're going to have to speed this up here and go get caught up with him. I think he's probably going to stop here shortly himself. If we hadn't had missed this unload on the turnaround, we wouldn't have wasted so much time. We probably would have been able to make it up there to him in time, but we're getting there. This guy is emptied out now, so we're going to make our attempt. Either way, he's going the right way, so once we get a few bushels out of him, we'll be able to finish up unloading on the go. And there it is. He is indeed full. So now the trick will just be not to overshoot. 
get some green going. I'm kind of surprised he doesn't start going again. Like I would expect the combine to just get going again as soon as he gets, uh, you know, 10, 20% emptied there. So it's a little bit surprising. Either way, now that we've got him empty, we're going to head on up to the end of the field here and grab another unload out of this combine real quick. We've only got 50% of this cart filled up at the moment. And so we should be able to, I think, unload him and then go head back down, unload uh, combine number two one more time. And then we'll worry about dumping this cart. Uh, I don't want to waste time dumping the cart when the combines have their augers out towards me. I'd rather make sure that they're in a position to keep going the other way and I don't have to stop and start our combines a bunch of times. Definitely want to keep those machines moving as much as possible. He's not nearly as full this time either. And so we should be able to follow him down closer to the end here. I want to make sure that uh, he can make it all the way to the other end at least here. And these long rows have quite a bit of uh, wheat in them. You saw that our other combine here only made it maybe about 20% down the field um, after his full run. And we had unloaded him right at the end last time. So I think that this should probably be good enough though since he's only taken a half of a header, a little bit more than a half of a header. So he's not going to get too full on this last uh, few feet on the field here, a few hundred feet on the field. And so I want to make sure I get back down here and can unload combine number two as he's approaching the end of the field. And then we'll be able to top off that semi on the far end there and run that back up to the farm, I think. We should have plenty of time to do that while the combines are working their way back down the other way. It's deceptive just how big these fields are. Uh, when you can see the equipment at the other end and then you're just driving and driving and driving to get there. Looks like he only has about a half a hopper here. But we'll keep following him all the way to the end of the field just to make sure he's empty when he gets there. Alright, we're going to call this close enough. Uh, I want to be able to sneak in front of him here real quick so I'm not trapped waiting for him to turn around. And we're going to go ahead and just top off this front hopper. And we're going to get this semi all fired up here and ready to go. As soon as we get this filled up, we're going to be running it up to the farm here. We should have plenty to get it filled up here. And I'm anticipating being able to go unload this and get back down here to unload the combines once they get turned around here on their rows so let's get this all tarped up and run it up to the farm I love the sounds on this Mack truck too sounds good I won't lie it's tempting to cut across that little bit of field there to get to the farm site we're gonna stick to the roads though alright let's see if we can Sort this out. Get the... Oh, we're, get, we're dumping the back... What now? Well, that's confusing. I guess the dump area on this trigger is quite big, and I was uh, set up on the back hopper instead of the front hopper. Either way, we're getting it unloaded nice and quick here. All right, let's get this run back up to the end of the field here because I'm sure our combines are going to be ready here shortly. I feel like whenever I'm running the trucks up to the bin site or anything like that, yeah, I'm always playing a racing mini game where I'm trying to get ahead of the combines and make sure that I get back before they're ready to be unloaded. It looks like we're going to win this race.
Well, we might as well go ahead and top off this semi with what we've got inside the grinding cart here right now, since our combine is just now getting to a point where he's turning around. We should be able to get all of this in the front hopper of the semi. And we're right in time to unload combine number one here. And then we'll be speeding up to the other end of the field here as fast as we can. I can see the crops for combine number two are just about to the end of the field there. It's looking like we're probably on our final pass. I'm wondering if these two combines are going to collide on their ways back down this pass. These headers are pretty wide. We do have the flashers on, so I know he's at least 80% full. Oh, look at that. Exactly like we planned it. Definitely can't complain about that timing. We'll get him emptied out and then uh, catch the other combine on the way back up here. We'll probably hop out and have to stop one of them before they run into each other because I'm definitely thinking that their headers are overlapping just a bit on this pass, which is perfect. I'd rather have them overlap just a little bit rather than have them have like a one foot wide uh, swath that we need to come back and get. So I'm just going to run this guy right back up and around so that we can unload the other combine as he comes down to the end here. But honestly, we probably don't need to. We could probably go dump him into the semi directly if we needed to. But this is also just the easiest way to get back down here to the other combine. We'll get turned around here. And then I'm going to hop out real quick and not get chewed up by the header. I'm going to turn this helper off and just move over a little bit, I think. Maybe we'll even circle around like so, just to make sure we're out of the way. I think I'm out of the way. It's kind of hard to tell with this giant header. So you can see the overlap wasn't much, but just enough which is perfect. That'll work really well. So as soon as he gets by us, we'll go ahead and start the worker back off here and send this guy down to the end of the field. And I'm not too worried about him. He can dump into the semi that's down on that end when he gets to the end. And so we're gonna grab the grain cart and just unload this guy one more time here since he should have a little bit more in him now get all lined up here looking good and so we're gonna let this guy do the same thing he can just go and unload into that semi when he's done and we're gonna head up here to our first semi and just top him off with what's in this cart here since I think we already put a pretty good amount into this semi so I'd really like to get this semi filled up and back to the bins if possible yeah we've got a good amount in that back trailer so we're gonna fill up the front first here and then between what we've got in this cart and what's in the combine I'm pretty sure we'll top this combine or the <clears throat> I'm pretty sure we'll top this semi off fronts all full we got another 360 bushels to toss in the back there, so that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and see where this combine's at. Almost to the end here. So we'll just take over and finish the last 100 feet or so here. The interior on this combine is fairly detailed. I like these screens, the more high-tech style screens. looking pretty good although the crop is set to barley on the screen which seems a little confusing I'm pretty sure we're harvesting wheat it looks like that back hopper might actually be full 
And so we're gonna go ahead and put it into the grain cart here just to get the combine emptied. Oh, nope, it looks like it's gonna take some more. I was thinking it was full, but either way, I want the excess left in the grain cart here. And then the grain cart can take his load down to the other end of the field and put it into the other semi once we empty out the combine down on that end. And so I think what we're going to do is just stage all of this equipment down here on the corner of the field we just harvested. Looks like combine number two is done down here as well. So we're going to go ahead and put this straight into the semi. Probably top off the front topper here first. I don't know if we're going to actually have enough to top it off or not between this and what's in the grain cart, but we'll see. And I think we're going to run this combine up here as well to the corner of the field. Just get all of our equipment in one spot. And then we'll bring the semi up there so I don't have to drive the grain cart all the way down here to the far end. Because I think what we want to do is... Uh, finish off our wheat and jump over to the other wheat field here before we start in on the canola. It makes the most sense to me to not have to switch the combines over between crop types if we don't need to, especially with our fields all so close to each other here. All right, we're gonna grab this grain cart real quick, run him down here. I parked the semi right up next to the combines there, so. I can hopefully drop this wheat into the semi real quick just to top him off as much as we can. Get all of the grain out of the implements and into the trucks. There we go, he's all empty. So we're just gonna put him right over here next to the combines. We gotta line everything up take a puff photo and do some maintenance on this stuff before we hit the next field maybe. Put the headers down so we're not putting so much pressure on the hydraulics this whole time. And let's get this other full semi down here and then uh, we'll get everything pulled back up here to the farm. Alright so we've got the full semi here. We're gonna take this right back up to the farm and get it unloaded into the bins and then we'll run back out there and grab the other semi that's only about half full and we'll take a look and see how well we're doing for our wheat so far. We've got that first truck dumping so we might as well get the second truck driving over there while that's happening. Try and maximize our efficiency here. Alright, we're going to leave him there for just a second. Let's get the second trailer unloading here. Should go pretty quick. And with that one empty, we're going to just pull this back around and leave this truck and trailers parked here up in the yard for the time being, I think. We'll go ahead and tarp them up. It's a good spot to leave it. And we'll just pull this guy right up here. Uh, let's see, which hopper are we on? We're on tip side front, it looks like. Most of our wheat was in the front of the hoppers here. We've got just a smidge that we spilled into the back hopper here in the left to go. 15 bushels, not too shabby. And so we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to get this all tarped up and pull it right around and just leave it parked up in the yard here. And so something like that should be out of the way. We can get through here if we need to. And if we just pull up the menu here to start off with, uh, we're at about 5,000 bushels of wheat, which is yielding pretty good. If we look at our precision farming data here, you can see just based on um, the precision farming for this field that we spent a lot of money on lime. A whole lot of money on fertilizer here and based on our yield our cost versus our earnings didn't really pan out here this is saying we're gonna lose a couple grand on it but the problem with this screen is that the uh, 
yield earnings for the crop are based on the current prices. And so if we look at the price of wheat right now, it's 1086 per bushel. And we can't really see the per bushel price for wheat in this menu. But what we can see is that over the year it goes up here. And so as we get into the winter months, it's going to be a lot higher than it is down here. And so, you know, I'm thinking we're making a profit on this. And precision farming's calculations are a little bit off because of that. However, with that, I think we're going to wrap up today's episode. Uh, next time we've got another field of wheat over here to knock out that actually looks to be probably just a little bit bigger than the one we just did. Uh, a little bit more turning around, so it'll probably take just a smidge longer is my thinking. And then we've got these two giant fields of canola. And so I'm thinking maybe we'll do another episode here and knock out the rest of our wheat. And maybe we'll do the canola as a uh, live stream. And so stay tuned for that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And uh, as always, that's all for today. Kedrick out. Oh, no. All right, we're coming up. <clears throat> we're coming up to the end of the quote unquote short rows here. And so I think what we're going to do is just, whoa, why'd he shut off? Oof. We hit the pipe on the grain cart. <laughs>